today's video, I'm gonna give you a really simple lighting technique for dealing with really shiny, high gloss chrome objects in photographs. So the key to lighting these sorts of items is to diffuse the light and to make sure that any reflections are covered by the diffusion material. And for this, we're going to use a roll of tracing paper. I'll pop a link in the description as to where to get this from. We use it in nearly all of our shots. I'm currently being diffused by a piece of it right now. It's really handy stuff and it only costs about 15 pounds a roll. So to start off with, I'm just taking a shot with a softbox, which is my go-to diffuser for most of my work. And you can see on this particular fish slice that we're getting very high key catch lights here and the actual metal is going black almost. What I'm gonna try and do is create a nice gradation across this so it doesn't show up all the scratches and all the minor little imperfections on it. Now because of the angle we're shooting at and there being nothing around it, we're not getting a great deal of reflection. So I'm just gonna bring another item into the shot to show you what will happen if there's anything within a close proximity to it. So by just placing a bit of Daz clay nearby, you can see that we're getting a reflection in there. And obviously if this was part of a bigger shot, it'd be a bit of a nightmare. Now this is at a slight angle off the ground, so it's not completely flat metal, otherwise we'd be seeing a lot of my ceiling. So what I'm gonna do now is first of all, get the light coming in from the back of the shot, which is where I want to light the shot from. And then we're gonna look at diffusing it and causing some gradation across the metal to completely change the aesthetic and the look of the image. So I'm not sure if you can see behind me, but I've just popped a softbox, there we go, at the back of the shot. And this is where I want to light this particular image from. So it's bringing the light in from the opposing angle to the actual camera lens. And you can see we completely fill out all of that black, but it's got a bit of glare to it and it doesn't look particularly nice. So now what we're going to try and do is sort of modify the modifier in order to create some really nice gradation of light. And to do this, I'm gonna use a C stand with a boom arm and just a roll of tracing paper. You don't have to use a C-stand, you can use anything to hold it up. Some tent pegs, whatever you may have around, even your tripod, or just hold it with your hands whilst the light slides across. So what I've done between these two shots is just bring a scrim into place and it's going from just above the camera to the back of the shot. And you'll be able to see, it's got rid of a lot of the glare, but it's still a bit too hot. So we're gonna add a another layer of diffusion into it. And then we're gonna start modifying exactly where the light is in relation to the scrim. There we are now with a double diffusion layer. So that's reducing the amount of light coming through and also just helping with a bit of the specular aspect to it. So what we're gonna do now is move the position of the light and take the modifier off it to show you how we can really create some shape within the image. This shot is taken with the light bare board at the very top of the screen behind me. So it's really high up and very close. And you can see how we've gone from this very high and stark reflective silver to this beautiful gray, which really shows off the metal in the fish slice, which is a sentence I didn't think I'd ever say. And this one, what we've done is we've moved the light much lower down, so it's at the bottom of the scrim, still bare bulbed, so it's a little bit further back here, and you can see the difference here, going from a very even lighting source, as to now we have some nice gradation where it's brighter here, 
As we come across the image, it becomes slightly darker. Now, neither of these options are better than the other. It's just different ways of doing it. You can see we've created a bit of problem here in the shadows, but that's easily fixed with a bounce card or a separate light source. Now, these are all completely fine ways to adjust the light. There's no right or wrong between these, but I think by adding the scrim with a double layer diffusion, shooting with a bare ball into it, and adjusting the height upon the scrim, it gives you far more creative control. This is really useful when you're shooting food as well, when you've got spoons which are giving an entire reflection of the room. A simple scrim acting as a tent, going from the back of the shot to the camera with a light that's gradated through it, it'll fix all of your problems and save you hours in Photoshop trying to clone out ceilings and harsh reflections. So if we jump back in here and look at where the image was at the start, it looked like somebody from the local camera club had taken it, there was loads of dust on there doesn't particularly look appealing, the flash almost looks direct, and it's just using a softbox, which is the approach that most of us would take for this kind of shot. And as we scroll down to the finished article, we have a much nicer gradation. It's not too glary, it's not too harsh. And with a few simple tweaks in post, we can easily bring out the lost shadow details down here. There we go, so we have a perfectly evenly lit fish slice. We can go for a bit more gradation with a different light placement. There's a few little scuffs and scuppers here to remove, but generally speaking, I'd be happy with this shot. It's not a nightmare to deal with in post, and if we look at what we get with just a softbox by itself, you can see that it's a clearly better way to light these. I hope that video is of use to you. If you do like it, do hit subscribe and like. I'll be putting out daily content at the moment, and I'll see you all next time.